the two litre cars and the open class cars. And so Fury leading from Glenn Seaton in third position, Larry Perkins in the NZ Connectors Commodore. In fourth position now, Jim Richards. In fifth, Alan Grice. In sixth, a great performance from the Kiwi, Kent Bajant. In seventh, David Parsons in the Mobile Commodore. And in eighth place is Graham Bowquet in the second of the team, New Zealand, Nissans. Everyone expected uh, Jim Richards probably to be as dominant as he proved to be at Surfers Paradise last weekend. But it would appear at this stage of the race, Neil, anyway, halfway through, that uh, George Fury and Glenn Seaton seem to have their measure. Well, in fact, what uh, the Nissan team have done in the last couple of days uh, in the lead-up to this race here in Melbourne is uh, completely revamped their engine management system once again by installing a new silicon chip. It's computer technology that controls these cars now. And in the matter of only seven days, they've transformed the car from a fourth or fifth place holder to the front of the field. And George, yesterday, you may have heard us say earlier in the program, was stunning in practice. He recorded a time of 148.5, which was six-tenths of a second faster than his teammate Glenn Seaton. Larry Perkins was third on the grid with a 49.3, then Richards with a 49.6. But the performance from the Nissan was quite remarkable. Whoops. And Alan Grice obviously in strife with tyres as we get towards uh, probably around three-quarter race distance as we estimated at this stage of the game. And the Commodores at 1,325 kilograms are obviously going to be uh, really struggling on tyres coming up to about three-quarters of an hour of racing. Keep in mind, though, uh, last year Alan Grice in the uh, Castrol 500 was able to sprint away from the field. In fact, the Commodores looked good at Sandown last year. Uh, but if, uh, obviously uh, this afternoon they're filling the pinch to the Nissans. Gives you some indication of how much quicker they're going this year over last year. Their three point, or in fact George in his qualifying lap yesterday was 3.6 seconds underneath the lap record held by Alan Grice, which I think was about a 152 odd time. That's how much development there's been put into these cars. You notice on the left hand side of the road there at the 50 metre braking mark into this right hander, one of the Shell Ultra High Sierras, it's car number 18 as I understand, Greg Hansford, who was involved in some kind of a shunt very early in the race. And, uh, well, it's just another one of those bad luck weekends for Hansford. He's been having a real rum draw out of that car in the last few race meetings. Uh, Dick Johnson, I don't have any news on at this stage of the game. He did break a differential in the car on Friday and was having a few problems because, uh, as you can see through this part of the course, the switchbacks are very, very hard on gearbox and transmission. Uh, other news to hand is that Tony Longhurst had problems in the early part of the race and, as I understand, pulled into the pits with what we think was an engine failure, but that's very much unconfirmed at this stage. OK, dropping down into the right-hander, and we've been able to see Alan Grice engaging in uh, magnificent dice with uh, Jimmy Richards, but Richards has, in fact, sprinted away. Next up there on the line for Grice coming up to put a lap on is uh, Tony Noski. And, of course, now we'll join our second race cam unit. So not bad pitches indeed, despite the circumstances coming from Sandown International Raceway. And our thanks to the very hard-working team that have been trying for the last three days to generate pitches from this circuit. Well, this is second place Glenn Seaton chasing team leader George Fury. That's him uh, out through the windscreen area as they head down the back straight. And quite obviously, as you can see, the two Nissans are well and truly in control of this race. So the gap between first and second really minimal, which raises the question as to whether or not these two guys are having a go for the lead or are they working to team orders? And Fred Gibson will be in the pit lane area at the moment keeping uh, total control of this race. The point situation, Fury desperately needs a, a win here this afternoon to give him any chance at all. He was probably the most consistent qualifier last year and was the greatest race winner last year without actually winning the touring car title. Yes, he was the runner-up to Robbie Francovic and the points table at the moment is being led by Jim Richards with a total of 135. Glenn Seaton, the man with Seven's race cam on board at the moment, has 112. Fury is third, equal third, in fact, with Tony Longhurst with 78. Larry Perkins has 76 and then Dickie Johnson with 54 points. Now, the interesting thing is that with the corrected point score, because there are nine rounds in this year's Shell Ultra Australian Touring Car Championship, the drivers have to drop at least, well, in fact, one round, not at least, but one round. And when they do that, they can drop their worst score. And when you do that calculation and work some of these point scores out, Mark, you end up with only a six-point gap between Jim Richards and Glenn Seaton. So you can see the importance of this race. And that's why Glenn Seaton is trying very, very hard at the moment. And he knows, of course, that he's got Jim Richards working his way back up through the field, now seeing, of course, that he's got past Alan Grice. We're back to the second race cam unit coming out of Alan Grice's car. Live pitches, of course, on the Seven Network from the Sandown International Motor Raceway. And Grice, who, of course, led the Castrol 500 at this circuit last year uh, before striking problems in the pit stop, the lead, of course, was then taken over by the Nissan team, and they didn't look back from that point. Grice, of course, after that, 
went on to win the James Hardy 1000 at Bathurst. And I know just back from the Charlotte 600 in North Carolina, he was hoping to at least lead today's field. So he's got some work ahead of him. Has he ever? Other news that uh, I've had in certainly the lead-up to this race, I don't have any news at this stage on uh, Colin Bond's progress in the race, but uh, Bondy in the lead-up had a few problems with the Alfa Romeo. You recall last weekend at Surfers Paradise they blew a head gasket, but uh, Bond's car had to have an engine rebuilt overnight. He only got 20 minutes on the circuit yesterday and collapsed a set of piston rings. And as I understand it, he is on the circuit, but as I say, I'm unfortunately unable to give you any details as to where. But at least we can tell you where the top six are, and that was better than the way we were looking 40, 50 minutes ago. That's right. There's Greg Hansford's car parked off to the left as Alan Grice continues in the race here, the seventh round of the Shell Ultra National Touring Car Championship. And, of course, the race leader is George Fury, the friendly farmer from Talmalmo in New South Wales. Second spot going to Glenn Seaton. That's going to do his championship hopes quite a lot of good. And Jimmy Richards trying to come back through the field to split the Nissans. George Fury had some problems in the warm-up this morning, as I understand, and they had a vibration in the car. And the highly professional and highly skilled Peter Jackson Nissan Racing Team changed the gearbox and tail shaft in the car just to make absolutely sure that that problem could be eliminated. And as you can well see, or you could certainly see before when we were looking through race cam in Glenn Seaton's car, it's not affecting George's performance at the moment. And one thing that we didn't mention last weekend in the haste of covering that rather hectic race at Surfers Paradise is that around about two weeks ago, George Fury, the man who leads this race in car number 30, accidentally fell out of his three and a half ton tractor on his property at Tomelmo in New South Wales and was run over by the right rear wheel. Uh, the tractor ran over his chest, his abdomen, and also, I think it was his right arm. And uh, after extensive x-rays, they found that uh, George was okay, which was quite unbelievable. And I said to him, I cannot believe that you're all right. Thank goodness it was soft ground. He said, Neil, it wasn't soft. It was as hard as you could possibly imagine. So Fury surviving the most remarkable of accidents, and in less than two weeks seems to be back to peak fitness. And when I spotted him yesterday, he had a big grin on his face and was obviously very comfortable, and he leads the race. Now, is this a BMW in strife? Yes, coming yes. up, that uh, Jim Richards. will be Jimmy Richards, who, of course, we watched earlier having that great scrap with uh, Alan Grice. So that is uh, really going to do uh, no good at all for Richards' hopes here of uh, being able to cement the lead and run away with two rounds to go. Well, I know which round Jim will be dropping <laughs> as his worst score out of the nine-round series. And, in fact, in some instances, that almost helps him. Now, I know that probably sounds a little strange, but if, if for example, Jim's worst score in the championship was a fifth, which I think it was to date he would have to drop the points that uh, fifth overall placing in this championship would accrue, which I'm not quite sure what they are offhand. And he has generally been the class winner of the under two and a half litre class uh, for most of the race meetings. So, in fact, Jim's worst performance to date, uh, when you drop it, would penalise his point score and bring him back Absolutely. into uh, uh, contention. And, in fact, that six-point gap between he and Glenn Seaton, now that all changes. Well, the two rounds remaining for the Shell Ultra National Touring Car Championship, we can guarantee you telecasts of both, uninterrupted by any person or any group. And that, of course, will be June the 21st at Sydney's Amaru Park Raceway and followed on July 5 at uh, Tony Perich and um, uh, his Oran Park Raceway. A fitting final. In fact, this uh, series that looked like it might have been a sprint early in the season for a couple of teams, particularly the Nissan team, looks like going all the way down to the wire, the last race. Yes, it does, and that's one of the great marks of the Touring Car Championship. It's always been that case here in Australia. We see some fantastic racing across the nation, and inevitably we get to the last two or three rounds of the championship and we have a battle on our hands, and it would appear as though that is going to happen when we get to Amaru Park in a couple of weeks. That's Gerald Kay's Commodore off to the left in what used to be the old pit straight area on the older Sandown complex. The, uh, the information on Richards hasn't come through at this stage of the game, but I can tell you that Frank Gardner said this morning that he believed he was in for a relatively easy race. He didn't know how competitive the cars were going to be against the Nissans, and his only concern was uh, uh, brakes. Three very hard stops at Sandown, which tends to raise brake temperatures. Well, we join uh, Glenn Seaton, and I would say uh, Glenn Seaton would almost be on the cool-off lap as they work their way up to the uh, beneath the bridge. So Glenn Seaton, I would think, has already crossed the line behind George Fury. Uh, you're riding this out with us as well. And uh, we expect to see Seaton either George Fury beforehand or uh, sitting in behind Seaton. But he is on the cool-off lap at this stage, heading back towards the pits. I'm just doing my mental sums and looking at my clock, and I'd suggest that, yes, the chicken flag has now come out, and Glenn's waving to officials, as you can see on Seven's race cam, and he would have come away with a second placing. This is very much armchair commentary as yes. you do at home. 
and Fury having taken this seventh round of the Shell Ultra Australian Touring Car Championship. Glenn Seaton in second place. I would presume that Larry Perkins has come up with a third place. The demise of Jim Richards would lift Alan Grice to fourth place in the Commodore and beyond that I wouldn't be game to have a stab. No, it's only supposition. We're just waiting for confirmation of placings to come down from the circuit through our cans and uh, we'll be able to confirm those for you. But uh, I would think uh, a very satisfying run for Glenn Seaton. He started the season so well, 21 years of age, when he started 1987. And uh, after a good run initially, and then uh, down in the doldrums, I think he's probably back within striking distance of his first uh, national touring car title. Yes, that's going to be very, very uh, interesting if that can happen. The, the likelihood of a real BMW and Nissan clash in the last two rounds of the series is one that I'm going to look forward to. Certainly. In the meantime, we're going to take a break and then return with confirmation of placings for round seven of the Shell Ultra Touring Car Nationals from Sandown Park. Welcome back to uh, our telecast. Uh, minute though it may have been, <laughs> but let me tell you this, we did in fact have pictures coming out of Sandown and our thanks to our technicians. Uh, quite a boil over with George Fury slackening off in the last couple of laps now. Very interesting, Michael. In fact, as we understand it, Glenn Seaton has taken the winning car number 15, probably because Fred Gibson asked uh, George to slow down, let Glenn go by for the point score. And as I quickly calculate it and understand it, Seaton would now lead with 141 points and Jim Richards would be in second place with 135. And according to their net results, that's dropping their worst performances, this is the real terms point score. So we've got, what, six points between them as we go to the next round at Amaru Park. Keep that in mind, a live telecast uh, on uh, the 21st of this month. Our thanks to everyone who made pitches from Sandown possible. We hope that we've at least honoured our commitment to motorsport fans throughout Australia. Good afternoon. <laughs>